Swifter, this is the video where you go full stick. In the previous video, our app saved data to the cloud. Now we're going to load data from Cloud Firestore. You'll do this in a very structured way. You'll write code in the MVC pattern so that it's quite reusable with only minor modifications. And if you ever wanted to swap out the database in the back end, you only have to modify your data model code, nothing else. You'll learn to create a convenience initializer that takes dictionary data loaded from Cloud Firestore and uses this to create a custom object. And we'll demonstrate the real time database magic of Cloud Firestore, where data is immediately pushed to all the devices without a pull to refresh. The deck is stacked in your Swifty favor, full stacker. Let's build. Now we've got a view controller that shows all of our spots or restaurants in a table view. That's our spot list view controller. But instead of a variable that holds an array of spot objects, we're going to create a separate spots plural class that contains a spot array, which is an array of spots. Now you might wonder, why don't we just declare a variable spots, which is an array of the individual spot objects? Well, the reason we're doing it this way with the single class called spots is we're going to write a single load data method in this class. And this is going to listen in for any changes in any of the individual spot documents in our spots collection. So anytime we add a document, delete a document, or even change a document, the listener will load the latest data for all of the spot documents in our spots collection and it will display those in the table view. This is awesome. It's a feature called real-time database. I'll show you how this operates across devices in the end. You don't have to do a pull to refresh. Now, since we need to write a single listener that will look across all of the individual spot documents, we need to create a single spot class that will have this array of spot values and we'll call that array spot array. So hopefully this will be more clear when we've coded this up and get it running. Now, one more thing. We're going to create an instance of Firestore, our database, when we first initialize an object from this class. And that's because as long as the spots object lives, we want a link to the database to be active so that we can listen into that database for any of the changes that we're looking for. Now, because of the way that Cloud Firestore is initialized in our app, we need to do it this way. We need to declare an instance of our Firestore database. We'll call that DB. That's what we're doing here. It's an implicitly unwrapped optional. See the exclamation point? So it's declared here, but we can't initialize it yet. We initialize it in this initializer that we write. Now, we're not going to pass any values into this initializer, but we do need to initialize the DB property like this, setting it equal to capital Firestore and calling the dot Firestore method. Let's code. So I'll create this new file just below my spot.swift file, right-clicking on spot.swift, selecting new file. Be sure to select Swift file, click next, name this spots with a capital S and a lowercase s at the end. Click create. Then we start our new class with class. It's called spots, upper camel case with the plural S at the end, open and close curlies. It's got one property in here, var spot array, and we'll say colon, and then inside of square brackets, capital spot, and that equals open and close square brackets, which is an empty array. Then up top under import foundation, we say import Firebase because we're going to be using some Firestore objects. Then we'll declare our database with var db colon capital Firestore with an exclamation point to force unwrap it. This is an implicitly unwrapped optional. Then we create an initializer with init, open and close parens, no values are passed in, open and close curlies. What we are going to do is we're going to initialize db. So we say db equals capital Firestore dot lowercase Firestore. It's a method with empty parens after it. Now that we've got this first part set up, we need to set up our load data method. And like the save data method we wrote in the previous video, this is going to be a remarkably reusable method. If you ever write an app that's going to have an array of documents that you display in a table view, this function is going to work great. And this is how we write it. First, in our definition line, you can see that this has an escaping completion handler. We're not passing any values in here or getting any values out, but we need to make sure that we have the escaping in here. We flag when we've loaded the data because we only want to do a table view reload data once we're sure we've gotten the data from the cloud. Then to set up this thing called the snapshot listener, we're going to say, hey, take a look at the collection. The snapshot listener says constantly take a look at that. And if there are any changes in the spots collection, well, the code down below fires. That's how the snapshot listener works. Now, if it detects a change, it's either going to get back an error or it's going to get back what's called a query snapshot. That's just a list of all of the documents inside of spots. 
Now there are ways to be able to narrow that down to a smaller subset. In our app, we just want to take a look at all of the spots. Then we're going to check for an error. If there is an error, we'll report the error and we'll return. If there's not an error, we're going to clear out the contents of our spot array property. We're going to set that to an empty array. And that's because we're going to go through all of the documents that are inside of this query snapshot. Essentially, all the documents inside of spot. We'll read them in one by one. This call here to spot with dictionary afterward is going to be a new convenience initializer that we write. Now, this initializer is going to be written inside of our spot class. So if you're ever reusing this code, in whatever is your singular class, you're going to have to rewrite a convenience initializer that accepts a dictionary because the data that we get back, remember we saved the dictionary to Cloud Firestore, this comes back as a dictionary. So here's the code for that initializer we're going to write. It takes a dictionary and this should take the key value pairs and construct, in our case, a spot object from the spot class. Now, once we have that object, we've essentially read in all of our data from the individual document. We're also going to update it with the unique document ID that it's saved, and then we're going to append it to our spot array. Then we're done, so we flag load data as completed. If you want to reuse this, what's going to change? Just everything that refers to either spots, which is our collection, spot array, you'll probably name this differently in different apps, and your spot class and your spot object. The code itself won't need to change. Let's code this. So back in spots, just before the last curly, let's declare that function. Funk load data open parens, then we're going to say completed colon, that's our completed flag, at escaping, then empty parens, arrow, empty parens, make sure you got your closing parens afterward, and then open and close curlies. Then as our first line in this function, we'll say db dot, and it's collection we want, and you want to select this one here that returns the collection reference. The parameter this takes is a string, the collection path, that's just in between quotes, spots, all lowercase. That's the name of the collection that you see when you take a look at the console and Firestore. Then after this, add the method dot add snapshot listener, and you want to choose this one here that has the listener as the value behind it. That's actually a trailing closure. You'll see that the code completion says attaches a listener for query snapshot events. So with that one selected, press return. Then this area that I've got highlighted in blue, listener colon fir query snapshot block, this is a trailing closure. So you could double click on this and it will reformat things in the trailing closure format. And for the query snapshot parameter, why don't we call this lower camel case query snapshot and error will be error. Then down below, we'll put a guard statement. The guard will let you through if error equals equals nil, else they'll bounce you, open and close curlies. First, we'll put in the print statement, error colon, adding the snapshot listener, string interp. That's going to be error, exclamation point, dot localized description. And we'll put angry emoji in front. Then still inside those else curlies, we want to do a return completed. And that's got an open and close parens after it. Then below that, we're going to clean out our existing spot array. So we say self dot spot array equals open and close square bracket. And now we're going to loop through all of the documents in the query snapshot that were returned by our snapshot listener. So you see how our closure is passed in a query snapshot above? What we're going to be able to do is we'll say for document in query snapshot. This is an optional, so we've got a force unwrap that with an exclamation point, but we know we've got something here because we don't have an error. Then dot documents, and we can see that this is an array of an object called the query document snapshot. Down here it refers to this array as making up a document set. That's what we want is a set of documents. So press return, open and close curlies. This will go through all the documents we get back. That is all the ones in the collection named spots. Then what we want to do is extract the data in each of those documents and put them inside of a spot. So we'll say let spot equals, and then we'll say capital spot, the class, and open curlies. And we don't have an initializer for this yet, but what we're going to want to do is we're going to pass in a dictionary. Now the document actually gives us back data in a dictionary format. So let's head over to spot.swift, the singular class. And so what we're going to do is the opposite of this guy here. When we saved, we needed to take the properties of the spot and convert it into a dictionary. Now that we're loading data in, we need to go from the dictionary that we saved and make it that spot. So just below my previous convenience initializer, I'm going to add a new convenience initializer by saying convenience init. Now, unlike the other one that didn't have any parameters passed in, this one I'm going to pass in a parameter named dictionary, colon, and then the dictionary is just bracket string colon any, close bracket. Then open and close curlies, and the body of this initializer will create a bunch of constants using the values and the key value pairs from the dictionary, and then we'll call the default initializer passing in each of these constants. So here we go, we'll create our first local constant, let name equals, and then we'll refer to dictionary, this value that we're passing into the initializer, then open square bracket, and now if this was an array, in between the brackets we would pass in a number which would give us the element of the array. For a dictionary, what we do inside of the brackets is we pass in a string which is the key that will give us the value 
associated with that key. Now it does return an optional because if the key is wrong, we get nil. So now after this open bracket, in quotes name spelled the same way as our property close brackets and here are a couple of things we need to deal with one is the dictionary type is string colon any so the string means all the keys are strings but the any means that the values can be anything so for us to make sure that swift knows that we're dealing with a string we need to downcast so we say as exclamation point then capital string question mark now also we may or may not get a value back that depends on whether or not there is a value in this dictionary with the key name name like we're showing here. So to deal with these issues we'll use nil coalescing. So we'll put in two question marks. Now if everything to the left of the question marks produces something that's not nil, a valid string, then that's what's going to go into let name. But if we do get a nil on the left of these question marks, then we'll pass in an empty string. So I'll just put open and close double quote. Now I'm going to create a similar line representing every property that's inside of this class. So what I'll do is I'll copy the line I've just written, then paste five copies just below it. Then I'll change the constant name and the key. They should be the same thing. So I can just copy address and paste it in both those places. Then the same with posting user ID, document ID. Now these first three values are all strings. I can copy average rating and paste it in both of those places as well. But average rating is a double, so I'll replace string with a double. And instead of passing an empty string, I'll pass in 0.0. .0. And for number of reviews, I'll change the string to an int and I'll pass in just a zero. Then in any convenience initializer, we need to call the default initializer passing in the values we want to initialize it with. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy the call to the default initializer from my convenience initializer just above this where I pass in empty strings and zeros. I'm going to paste it in down below just before the close curly in my dictionary convenience initializer, but I'm going to replace the empty strings and the numbers with the constants that I created above. So name, address, average rating, number of reviews, posting user ID, and oh yeah, I'm realizing right now, um, I actually don't save the document ID as part of the dictionary that's part of the document because that's the document name. So I'll leave passing in the document ID as an empty string here. We can delete this line, let document ID above. We don't need that at all. See over here in the console. So we don't have any fields that are named document ID. The document ID is actually the name of the document, but I'll show you how we get that. Let's head back to load data in our spots.swift. And now inside this for loop, we're looping through, getting each of the documents, we can say let lowercase spot equals uppercase spot, open parentheses, and we see now we have this initializer that passes in a dictionary, press return to accept this. So how do we get our dictionary data from the document? Watch this. We type in document dot, and look at this first one up here. It says data. Look at this. This is a method that returns a string any dictionary. Press return on this. Perfect. At this point, we've got all of our data except for our document ID. How do we update that? Well, we'll say spot dot document ID equals, and now watch this, document dot, and sure enough, document ID is right in here. Select that bad boy. So now we got an instance of spot set up with a document ID as well. We'll say self dot spot array dot append, and we'll append our spot. That's it. So after the curly just below this, you're going to put in completed open and close parentheses. There should be three curlies that follow. You're done with load data. So now how do we use what we just coded? Well, we're going to do this in spots list view controller. Remember, that's our view controller with the table view. First, we've got to declare an instance of spots. We'll declare it up here, but we can't initialize it right away because of the peculiarities of how we have to initialize our Firebase Firestore instance. We've got to wait to initialize it until we're inside of view did load. So just make sure that you declare and then initialize down here with spots equals spots. Then we're going to create a view did appear. And in view did appear, that's where we're going to call spots load data in our our completion handler, this is where we can update our table view by reloading the data. And we know we can do this because at this point we will have completed loading data. Now remember, we're also going to need to update our table view methods that referred to just spots. Now we've got spots.spotarray.count. Down here we can also refer to spots.spotarray when we update our name label.txt. And now when we pass our data that's selected over to our spot detail view controller, we're also going to need a prepare for segue. But again, this is a prepare for segue that's going to have less code than we needed to have in apps like our to-do list. How come? Because we never have to worry about saving and updating the table view that's automatically handled by our listener. And because of that, we don't have to have the else condition we usually have in our prepare for segue when we head from table view to detail, which deselects the table view selection. That's not important to us at all. 
so we can leave it out. If you copied and pasted and left it in, it wouldn't break your code. You just don't need that code. So we'll just put this first part in here where we say, hey, are we going over via the show detail? If so, then that must mean you clicked on a cell. If we clicked on a cell, then we want to make sure that we pass over the selected spot that's in spot array into our destination spot. Otherwise, we're going to have nil and we start from scratch when we add a new place. Let's build! So let's head over to spot list view controller. We're going to get rid of the old dummy data, the string array that we had in spots, and we'll make this var spots colon, and then this is going to be capital spots exclamation point. We declare this as a spots class. Now we're going to initialize the spots class inside of view did load. I'll do this right after the call to super. So here we say lowercase spots equals uppercase spots open and close parens. Below that, let's write our view did appear. So I'll type in view did appear, make sure it's selected in code completion, press return. Xcode writes in the full stub. We gotta call super, so inside I'll say super dot view did appear, pass in animated. Then we say spots.load. Look at this code completion knows about our load method. It even has the completion handler afterward. Select this, press return. Then inside of the curlies, we'll say data. Then let's head down to our table view extension. We need to perform just a little bit of surgery here. We'll start off in our number of rows in section, and we'll change spots.count to spots.spotarray.count. We need to do something similar in our cell for row at. We're going to change spots bracket index path dot row to spots dot spot array bracket index path dot row. And then we're going to pass in the dot name property of the spot this will return. This is going to work fine. Now it's time to finish this off with a prepare for segue. Why don't we go ahead and add this just before the last curly in the class. Before the extension starts, I'll type in prepare, select prepare for segue. Xcode writes the stub. Inside the curlies will say if segue dot identifier equals equals in between double quotes it's show detail upper camel case you can check that on main storyboard if you want to but i know this is correct open and close curlies then let's get our destination let destination equals segue dot destination as exclamation point spot detail view controller this is going to make sure that when we refer to destination we can get all of the properties in spot detail view controller then we'll get the selected index path we'll say let selected index path equals table view dot index path for selected row force unwrap that with an exclamation point we know somebody selected on it but it would otherwise give us an optional then we can say destination dot spot it knows about the spot property in our destination and we'll set that equal to spots dot spot array open bracket selected index path dot row we're good to go let's build and run and see how things work now i'm already logged in let me pull up the firebase database console so we can take a look at what's going on behind the scenes. So look at this table view. We've got three spots in here. Pino's Pizza, Big Little Diner, Shake Shack. Let's click on each of these individual documents and see what we've got. Pino's is showing. Click on this second spot in the console. That's Little Big Diner. The third one is Shake Shack. Outstanding. Let's go ahead and add a record and see what happens. I'm going to put in Chef Ronsky's. That's a James Beard winning chef. Little takeout right up the street from Boston College. Click on save and whoa, there goes Chef Ronsky's. It was added to the cloud on our detail view controller. The code that did that was from our previous video. In this video, we coded up a load data function that added a snapshot listener listening in. And as soon as Chef Ronsky's was added, when we got back to this table view, boom, that showed up. Now what happens if we sign out? I'll do that. Sign back in. And hey, we see all four records have loaded in. Excellent. Now it's time to show you some real magic. So you've probably seen apps where you have to pull down the table view to refresh the data that's on screen. With Cloud Firestore and a real-time database, that is not necessary. Let me show you. Now you see my simulator running on the left hand side, it's got our four records loaded. Look right next to it though. This is the actual image of the iPhone that is in my hands running in real time. Now I just logged in. On the iPhone in my hand, you see the same data I see in the simulator on my left. But watch this. I'm going to add a record. If you're in Boston and near Fenway Park, I recommend you go to Island Creek Oyster House. Just don't go when a game is on. It's always crowded. And now watch what happens when I click on save. Notice that I'm saving with a device in my hands. The device on the left is the simulator, a different device that is not connected to the device in my hands. Here comes save. And flippin' Craig Fitterigi, you see that it was added not only to the device in my hand, but also without pulling to refresh and instantaneously in the simulator as well. That's the magic of Cloud Firestore. This is a professional real-time database. No extra code needed for that.
Just to show you this works with deletions too. I'm gonna move my console around so that you can see everything. And I got Shake Shack clicked here. I'm gonna go under the three dots and I'm gonna delete the document Shake Shack. I don't know why anybody would wanna delete Shake Shack, but I'm gonna do it. I'll click this button to confirm I wanna start the delete. Tweak my table view, will you look at that? The values are gone from both table views that we have here automatically. When I change data, deleting data from the console. Swifter, you full stack. You just built an app that saves data to the cloud, loads data from the cloud, and is synced across users of the database, regardless of device. Feel good about your skills. Keep at it.